Well, thank you for coming. Welcome this afternoon. Um, I just heard I'm the first speaker this afternoon. So, what we will do is we will watch three um, fragments from a film I made, a documentary film, that tries to show truth and objectivity. Objectively, what war is like and what the function of war is for its spectators. Um, surely, since long, since probably 20 years, uh, there is a commodification of war. Some people argue that we're all conscripts of war. We are held hostage by war. By we are conscripts, but not physically. We don't have to fight wars. We're not sent out to fight. Not here, anyways. Uh, but we're held hostage by the imagery of war. And the big battle is probably not who is fighting whom on the field with guns and Kalashnikovs. The big battle is who will support whom politically, humanitarian, in humanitarian ways. And we are the battlefield of imagery of war. Um, it's Michael Ignati, I don't know how to pronounce his last yeah. name, that wrote quite some things on that. Um, the most interesting to me is that if we are the battleground, our opinions, if our opinions about who is the good guy and who is the bad guy and who is who needs to be bombed and who needs to be helped and where we will get our oil and where we will not get our oil. If we are the battleground, the battlefield, then the most important question to ask to people in war is not how they feel, because it really doesn't matter how they feel. What matters is how we feel, watching them. Why that matters is because we are the battleground. It's many actors in war, of course the big actors such as state propaganda machines, but also refugees and, uh, and, uh, and terrorists and, uh, and humanitarian workers and, well, every single journalist, every single actor in war has as one of its, well, it's probably the single most important battle is to win you over. So really it doesn't matter, all these people that need you to be won by them, it doesn't matter how they feel. If, if they tell you how they feel, or if media do that for you, go to a victim whose legs have been cut off by a grenade, and the building has been bombed, and everybody is dying and crying out. Um, if they pretend, they being the media, or these people being filmed, that it, that it matters for you to know how they feel, like how do you feel now, now that your legs have been cut off, and they say, well, I feel terrible, or or I did it for Allah, or whatever it is they answer, it doesn't really matter. It is about how you feel, and that's why they say these things. That's why they are filmed, and you are very easily manipulated. We all are. Therefore, I try to make a shortcut in that whole system. If it's all about me, really, or about you, then it's useless to ask these people how they feel. The real question is, I've now said it five times, I'm sure. Uh, how I feel. So that's the central thesis of this film I made. Um, unfortunately, we don't have enough time to uh, to show you the whole piece, which is somewhat, as I said, unfortunate because it has a, a build-up, it has a storyline and all that. But anyway, you will now see three fragments of each three or four minutes that I'm sure will show you some of um, of uh, of what I've just said. Uh, the first fragment is the opening scene of the film. It's not very important, but you know it's the opening scene, so it you know, kind of sets the it kind of sets the uh, it, it describes the approach of the film itself. Uh, then the second scene is a uh, well, it's more interesting, and then the third scene is also more interesting. <laughs> so let's start with the first one.
Я Энзо Мартин, из Голландии. А кто у вас Я хочу делать как интервью в пост. Жив твой ставит? Да, да, да. Ну вот слушай меня сюда. Если он сейчас сюда не подъедет, я его расстреляю. Сюда, давай. Что стоит здесь? Ну, я не могу, могу вернуться. Нет, ты это уже не вернулся. Извините, ну, если вы хотите, не вы... Давай, дружище, поехали в Чечне. Э, туда. Ну, Чечни не, не, не На приеме тускать. Ну что, у вас можно было? Да, да, да. Понял, понял, тускать проблема. Журналист, журналист. Хочет поговорить с комендантом, какой на прием. Везу к вам, везу к вам. Пошел без очереди. Пошел, пошел, объезжай. Слева. Из Голландии, из Голландии. Нет, 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 ничего. Я его сопровождаю. Я понимаю, информация это деньги, но я тебя не понимаю. У тебя жена есть? У меня еще нет. Жена? Жена? Нет. 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 А девушка есть? Нет. О, видишь? Ну, я, не я, 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 я хочу, я, я люблю а, один девушку. Я тебе скажу. Да. Есть в Голландию, да. женись. И забудь эту проклятую страну. Вы понимаете, вы думаете, что иностранные которые здесь э, приехали, они, они как дурак? Нет, я тебе не думаю, я тебе просто говорю. А. Опасно просто сейчас. Уму на Россию не понять, понимаешь? Едем в Голландию, и все будет нормально. А интервью дать? Ничего хорошего тут нет. Война только началась. А я, что вы думаете обо мне? Об этом тебе? Да. Ты просто молодой и малый, которому захотелось приключений. Ну, наверное, хороший. Ну, чисто сидеть. Yeah. What should a man do if he loves a woman? Uh... Как вы объясните с того, если человек влюбится в вас, он признается вам в любви? Если, ну, я не знаю, но если он мне тоже нравится, it's not so easy тогда это, конечно, хорошо, directly, наверное. Как важно, для тебя достаточно, чтобы он любил тебя или чтобы ты тоже любила его? То есть вот эта взаимность играет большую роль для тебя? Наверное, когда друг друга любят, девушка и парень, там все кончается. Yeah, it's, you know, it, it's uh, very good when they both love each other.
Yeah, it's a shameful thing to do. But I mean, the best thing would be, of course, to find out yourself what, what, where your place. Is. But in some way, I feel I need to do it through asking other people. I don't agree. I don't agree. It's a shameful thing. No. I don't know. I think it's part of our world. Honestly, I think most of them have just not had enough experience with people that will steal their stories. You know? Which is what people, what some people do. We're supposed to have stories so that we can tell the world what's happening and make it sound real so that we'll get money so we can do a good job to help people. But if you get people to tell you the story, then... What do they do with their tears after you walk out? What do you want from them? I want tears. You want tears? What do you want? You want tears? You want starving babies? Maybe a couple of those? A bit of a, a little bit of shooting in the background? What do you mean you want tears? Yeah, that's what I want. You can't have it. You can't have tears if you ain't gonna get a piece of your heart. <laughs>
Бог хвостов И заплакала Россия, Храня своих сынов, Принимая в дар с Кавказа Сотни цирковых гробов. Город грозный ночью поздний, В перекрестках рассеров. Русские имитируют войну. Военным это выгодно. Каждый день это деньги, это награды. И как они имитируют? Имитируют выстрелами, освистительными ракетами, взрывы, которые, может быть, вполне вероятно, они сами взрывают. Там была? Не так каждый день. Сегодня еще спокойно, а мы, наверное, всю ночь на пролет. Стрельба. Хотя здесь горды. Уже ничего не осталось. Да, Это можно сбывать Голливуда на прокат. Никаких декораций не понадобится. Швас Нейр может снимать свой здесь Терминатор 3. Прикольный надо. Никакого. Все на месте. Может быть, все-таки, чтобы вы его полюбили, чтобы он вам понравился. Мужчине что-то должно быть секретное, что-то в ней. Ну, как-то если слишком человек открывается тебе, это как-то бывает неинтересно. Лучше потихоньку его. Потихоньку, чтобы он рассказывал, то, что у него есть. Почему это цифра, да, что-то? You to open slowly, slowly, uh, day by day, little by little. Uh, so is a man more interesting for you if he plays some kind of a game with you? Тебе это нравится, его как это его интересы, у него завлекательно. Примерно девушке нравится его завлекательная игра. Тебе это нравится его игра? Или шутка есть там, правильно? Или какие-то у него манеры есть, может какой-то походка или вот по разговору он хочет что-то такое. Как это заигрывающий дом, он объясняется в любви и так далее, и так далее. Значит, тебе нравится, когда он заигрывает. Это я не понимаю. <laughs> okay, so please tell her that I know this woman in Belgium and um, tell her that uh, she reminds me very, very much of her in many ways and that's why I always ask all these questions to her so that I can learn something of it. Explain it. <laughs> Ты мне напоминаешь о ней в many ways. По, по, по многим аспектам. Yes. And that's why I ask all these questions to her, so that maybe I can learn something. И поэтому я задаю эти вопросы, может быть, твои ответы не помогут э, точнее понять ее.
It's a film about films. And I think what the film shows is how, you know, the girl in the last fragment, she was obviously uh, not very happy. And she has a reason not to be very happy. And the reason that she shows why she's not, or the, the reason why she's not happy in this film is why she would never be happy if she is used for us to relate to war. Because what your typical photographer will do, or your typical cameraman, the pictures that you see in your everyday news magazines or on TV, is exactly what happened here. If you are a photographer, you go to some faraway country where 10-year-old girls are raped and, you know, all the horrors of the world, things that we will see and that we will read about in the newspapers, if there's, then there's also a picture next to the article, then this is exactly how the picture is made, every single time. Your cameraman will go to the girl, 10 years old, that has been raped or, you know, whatever horrific thing happened to her, you will make friends with her. You will say, well, you know, maybe we won't help you, but, you know, if we show this in my country, then we will stop the continuation of the things that have happened to you. So you make friends with her, you befriend her family, her mother probably, like in this case. And you say, you, you present them with some, some, some phony, some phony idealism. You will say, in the future, if I make this picture, then we will create awareness and then we will stop this war in one reason or the other. Which, of course, is not true. We are consumers of war, not stoppers of war. And the way in which the images that we see as consumers of war, uh, the way they are made is in exactly the same way as you just saw here. Because even if your average photographer will not tell this whole story to the girl that he then photographs, he will just say, well, just when he won't tell her about his girlfriend at home or whatever his personal life is. But in the end, the reason why we look at these images, at these people being photographed and being uh, portrayed, is exactly to feel something for ourselves. We don't look at these people because they really interest us. We look at them because we... because they supply us with emotions that we wouldn't otherwise have in our own lives. And that's also why we can... Um, why we can afford to like this war, to, be, to feel sympathetic towards these victims and not towards other victims. That's because we feel emotionally close or because, in the end, because she looks like your girlfriend at home. That's why you like, uh, why you like uh, the Palestinians, maybe, and you don't like the Iraqis or the other way around or whatever it is. Uh, we can be very picky about whom we like and whom we don't like, whom are the real victims and whom are not. Um, we can be picky because we consume it. And the way these consumptions, these commodities are created is, as I believe, uh, very much like the thing we just saw. Now, unfortunately, what you see, what you've just seen are just two fragments. I think the film as a whole um, doesn't really need all these uh, explanations of mine. Uh, because if there's one thing that is important uh, for a film, in these days then, or the way I like to make them, is that they are self-contained, that they will explain, that the film itself will explain the economy that it functions in. That suffering, portrayed suffering, can, you know, portrayed suffering relates to many, in many ways to the, to the public. Uh, you, you see images, images of people suffering uh, daily. Uh, in most cases, however, I think the real and truthful relationship about the one that is being shown and the one that watches is not at all represented by that picture. And it's also not at all represented by the empathy that you may feel towards that picture. I think in most cases, empathy with, uh, or any reaction you may have towards uh, the portrayal of suffering uh, is, a, uh, is a very, very bad um, is a very bad mechanism to... Uh, it, it doesn't depict or it doesn't show what the truth or relationship between you and the people and, and the person being depicted, uh, what that relationship is. Um, I'm getting kind of lost in my words here, but 
Um, so what I was getting at, uh, it is important for a, what I try to do is to take out pictures of, of people suffering out of their, the, the, the economy that they normally function in and uh, put them in a context that I create. Uh, I, I make it, anyway, this goes too so far. You won't get it just by words. You would get it if you would see a film, I'm sure. Um, yeah. There's a whole new subject I'm working on that I can talk about later if you want to. But um, maybe it's good if anybody, you know, it would be easier for me to talk about this very thing if people would ask me questions. Otherwise, I just have to talk and talk. I don't know if I say something you want to hear. Uh, I have a little question. So, uh, in the beginning, you, s you started your uh, expose by saying that it's about that we should ask ourselves questions about how we function in this economy of uh, war images. Um, but in, in the documentary, or at least the parts you showed, mm. it seemed as if uh, people were, or you were trying to make people ask you questions. Um, about your position, so well, I ask him. I ask him about my position, really. Okay. Um, but it doesn't matter really what. Um, within the film, it's true that I, I ask people to comment on me. I ask them what they feel about me, and in a way about you being the spectator. As I said in the beginning, I don't think. I think it's very untruthful to go to a war and ask how you feel now that you are being bombed or this or that. Because, once again, the reason why they are portrayed and why other people in another war are not portrayed is because you relate to some people and you don't relate to other people. You, some people look like your girlfriend and some other people don't look like your girlfriend. That's why some people will, you will, towards some people you will feel sympathetic and to other people you will not feel sympathetic. That's how choices are made about, well, what war relates best to the public. It's a very, watching things is a very egotistical act in many ways. And um, it's very much about the, uh, it's very much about the, the expect, like in any product really, it's about the expectations of the public. What the, the public, uh, what it wants, you will give it what it wants. So you will give it a beautiful girl. And you will not give it her sister who is not so beautiful, for example. And you will take a girl that looks less like, um, well, girls that you like. Awareness is created, it's a consumer product. So you don't think that showing something like this will lead, you don't think that showing uh, these images will lead to an act? No, I think it's really useless to show people suffering in images and then think that that will change the fate of these people. I think that's useless. Only those people will show suffering where some pretty powerful actors can capitalize upon their suffering. That's the images you will see in the media. All of the other people that suffer are not shown because nobody can capitalize upon it. Now what I could do as a filmmaker is show you yet some other people and say, oh, but they're suffering too, or they're suffering too, but that's, that's five more people there or ten more people there. The grand, in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter. I think it's far more important in the grand scheme of things that to show, that's what I choose to do anyways, um, to show that, um, that, well, first of all, suffering is pretty much everywhere in the world, in very many places that we don't know of. And uh, it will only be shown there where we can relate to it. It will be shown where we have, most of the time, economical interests. And that's where you will feel aware about what you will feel aware about. Because it will be in the Volkskrant, or the NRC Almost or the New York Times, or on TV. But in many other places, it doesn't matter, because there is no economical interest in showing that there is suffering too. And human interest. Human interest. Stay of the well, that's now that typically is something that the beholder holds. Human interest is all about consuming. Mm -hmm. It's about you know. Yeah, it's, human interest is what normally cosmopolitan is. Uh, that, that's the title that is used for things like the cosmopolitan or you know, human interest. It's about fun things about other people. I know that as an artist, an like anthropologist, I find your um, perspective a bit unidirectional. Um, 
in the sense that you project yourself as active, and those that you try to represent as passive, um, I think it might help if we make a difference between what we see, your interaction with in the film with that girl, who is definitely also experiencing herself through you, as you are experiencing yourself through her. Um, and there's there's intersubjectivity um, and, and an intersubjective experience there. And then what you do with it in your construction of the movie by which you want to give us um, a message on how you see war. And I see this as two completely different things. And I think there are other ways of involving oneself with images of war that would be more um, intersubjective. For instance, if you would be open at that moment for what that, pers that person would find important mm. and, and how you would represent it to the world. Oh, I see your point, absolutely. I think in a way, uh, first of all, I should say my film is not about showing other people. It's about why we watch other people. So first of all, I would say the subjectivity of that girl really doesn't matter to me. That's my first answer. On the other hand, I should say, by the very approach of only focusing on me as the consumer of her suffering, or, or her presence in this case, because she, wasn't, she obviously wasn't suffering very much, or she dealt very well with it. Um, it's true that by asking her something about me, really, you see much more about of that girl than you would if you would just ask her how she. By deliberately, by deliberately only talking about myself and my own agenda and what I want to achieve with this film and you know in that film, uh, you do you. Other people, like the typical passive victims, do get outside of their role. I think that happens with the girl. It happens in many more cases in the film. Um, uh, one of the side effects of only, in this case, talking about myself, asking other people what they think about me, rather than me commenting on how they feel, or them commenting on how they feel, uh, a side effect of it is that in, in the process of telling me what I am, and what you are as a spectator, you, should, you do see a whole lot more of what they are. They fall outside of their typical victim roles that they are normally attributed in, in media. Question. I have uh, two questions. Um, first, a, a practical question how you got into Chechnya. I'm assuming that all of this was filmed in Krasnya and Chechnya, how mm. that pragmatically functioned after the first scene. And um, the second question it seems that in, that in the film that you have an emotional need for making this film, and you put yourself actually in great danger to make this film, and what, what for you was so urgent about going there and making this film for you personally? So these are two questions about pragmatism, really. The first one, surely, but the second one too, what is your personal motivation? Yeah. Well, the first one is, is the fun part. Um, thought a little bit about these things and then I I had this all high eight camera and then I just went really. And it took me a while to get in and you know it takes a lot of uh, diplomacy and uh, things like that because you know typically journalists wouldn't get in at that period of time. There was no uh, humanitarian organization that would go in. So it, yeah I, 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 I just studied the situation until I found my way in and I did it. So that's the first one. Um, so why? Oh yeah, why that is a fun question to answer because you know it's it's really uh, I had no papers and no money and a bad camera, so it's fun. Normally I, I give that answer with a lot of uh, with a big smile in my head, but it doesn't seem so important anymore. Really, how I did it um, and why I why I did it. Um, well, I should really say I. I I felt very uncomfortable with uh, with I, I all of a sudden realized that uh, 
watching other people is all about ourselves, really. And uh, in a situation in which people desperately need to be seen because that's what their survival depends on, that's what depends on whether they will get food or aid or, or bombs, really. And they can choose, we can choose for them in a way. It was really, it felt really terrible for me that these people that depend on us watching them and in what way we watch them, uh, then are only watched by us insofar as we, insofar as we, our, our ability to relate to them. We will watch some people, we will not watch other people by our watching. On some people we will throw bombs and on other people we will, we will give them flour, bags of flour. So this type of consumption has very great consequences towards the, the imagery, towards the people that are being shown. Um, so I wanted to uh, make a film in which you, the position watching, I, I try to assume the role of the television spectator with the agenda of the television spectator and with the, yeah, with the agenda of the television spectator, but not sitting at home in my couch, but directly confronting that with the, with the situations that are not normally consumed through TV. My position as watching all these things, I wanted to confront it with this reality uh, somewhere. A reality that to a large degree is formed <coughs> by the way I watch it. I'm going to thank Renzo for the moment. Okay. We'll create yeah. some time for questions <laughs> later at the end. I would like to offer the floor to Hito. Hito Sire.